I identify with the Dotson because it's a workhorse and I never give up. I work hard and I think Dotson can be said to be exactly the same. It's very well engineered, just never gives up. My name's Troy Irmish and I drive a Bluebird. So the Bluebirds were never imported in the United States. The Triple S models were basically just a model only offered in Japan. The 240Z really being the forefront, the first sports car that they brought in that really took a lot of headlines. The 510 was kind of a natural progression to broaden their horizons and bring in another group of people into the market of racing and uh, street cars. It might be, I'm guessing, maybe only about 30 of them in the United States. They offered a 1600 version and 1800 version, and mine's the 1600 version. Every 510 owner, it seems like I've ever met, is ruling to get a, a Bluebird. It's hard to find a Bluebird in the States that's not rusty or that hasn't been in a, in a wreck and I got both. It's not perfect and I think that's indicative of Datsun 510s. They just never seem to be perfect. It just shows that I'm not afraid to drive it hard. I'm all about the go and stop, not so much about the show. The Datsun engines sound awesome. I've got a Rebello cylinder head and big carburetors with huge chokes and I can run the thing to 6,500 RPM, which is good for a streetcar engine. I think it's a little sensory overload. It's a little bit of everything. The car has great grip. The brakes are awesome. The sound is terrific and the horsepower is adequate. So I, I think it's just a little bit of everything. And then shifting with the left hand is always kind of keeps you on your toes. I began racing Dotsons in 1989. I was afforded the opportunity to make payments on a race car to a guy that was nice enough to let me take the car. And he just wanted to see it raced and, and taken care of. And three years after I started racing, I loaded everything I had up and we went to Arizona for the first pro race that I was gonna do with SCCA. And we did really well. We sat on the pole and broke the track record and we won and I uh, made just enough money to get home. <laughs> Then uh, I've moved on to stock car racing and, and I raced circle track paved ovals for about 15 years, won a handful of races and I've gotten back into my roots basically in 2005, started racing vintage 510s again and I've oh, been really dominant in the uh, vintage market. In the beginning, obviously I couldn't sustain all my bills by racing. Uh, I was able to tread water by selling parts to guys at the track and then and when I wasn't at the track I was fixing cars to sell them and then it turns out that somebody wanted to buy the entire car and then that's how that thing snowballed from uh, just selling a fender to a guy to selling complete cars to working on them for them. So when I restore cars it's to get enough money so that I can go racing. <laughs> when I'm restoring race cars, that's because I love racing and uh, I love to take care of the cars at the track. I like helping my customers. I really enjoy taking a car that uh, was raced 25, 30 years, even 40 years ago, bringing it back to its original condition and uh, handing it off to the customer and then help him get faster and comfortable in the car and then watch him do well in it and really enjoy himself. I kept track for a long time of how many 510s I owned and uh, once I got over 225, 230, I stopped keeping track. <laughs> for the first 10 years, people were like just dropping cars off. In the early 90s, cars were just in side yards and garages and driveways and people just didn't really want them. It doesn't seem like there are any more garage finds or, or hidden gems like there used to be. Well, the cars that I've worked on that are notable, a couple of Bob Sharp cars, um, one of which we still have here at the shop. I've worked on uh, Rob Dyson's original uh, race car that started the whole Dyson dynasty. I've also worked on the Dave Frelson car, which uh, is the winningest SCCA national car. And these guys that I build their cars for are not afraid to race them hard. They're not trophy cars, they're for fun race cars. Starting off working out of a 
carport, putting my seat belts in with a punch and a screwdriver and a, and a hammer. I didn't even own a drill to put my seat belt bolts in to have made it this far. Pretty much everything that I've been able to obtain emotionally and financially are really based on the opportunity that the 510 presented itself to me and I took advantage of it. And I would have never imagined uh, 25 years ago that I'd be able to be sitting in my own shop with cars behind me and a line of people waiting for me to work on their stuff.